Didactomory Uncivilized Vitality. This is the anatomy uh, playlist for those people that are interested in uh, basic understanding of how their body works. We're going to start with the, all the names of the parts or if you're taking an anatomy class, this could be a um, good kind of refresher before you have like a, an exam or a quiz or something. So let's uh, let's start out about uh, let's start out talking in this video with uh, the different types of anatomy you can study. So the term um, anatomy, uh, you can divide that up into the tomi and the ana, meaning to basically to cut and apart. So anatomy means to cut apart. That's so you can identify and check out all the cool parts. Okay, anatomy cut apart. So, the uh, and, uh, different types of anatomy you can study range from the microanatomy, where things you would need a microscope to see and study. And we're talking about uh, different types of tissues and cells. And then gross anatomy, which uh, doesn't mean icky or uh, disgusting. It means gross, that you don't need a microscope, basically. And then we're talking anything that you can see with the naked eye. So, organisms are arranged, uh, living things from... Uh, the cellular level, and then cells are going to specialize, are going to group up in specialized uh, tissues. Tissues will join together and form organs. Uh, organs will come together into uh, what are known as organ systems. And then if you get enough organ systems to meet the requirements of a, of a, a complex living uh, creature such as ourselves, then you'll get the entire organism. Right? So think of this as an organizational hierarchy of the human or any, any complex uh, high order uh, animal or creature. So we've got the cellular level, which is the smallest living unit uh, you can have, uh, something that's defined as alive. Although there's some debate, I guess, with viruses, but I don't wanna get distracted with that. Cells give uh, you tissues, Tissues give you organs, organs give you organ systems, and then you get the entire organism. You can think of the cell and tissue layer uh, as your microanatomy. Specifically, the study of, of tissues would be called histology, and the study of cells is called cytology. Okay? So um, that's a different type of anatomy, not something we're going to do videos on, but you can take a course, you will take courses through for medical school or something, uh, in histology and in uh, different cytology. You can take cell biology. That's basically cytology. These are your microanatomies. <clears throat> As an anatomist, I typically work at um, the gross anatomy level. So organs up to organ systems and organisms, and the entire organism. And then let's talk about that. Uh, there's different types besides gross and micro uh, of anatomy. You can... You, you can study. Um, so gross anatomy can be divided into uh, clinical anatomy. Right? Clinical anatomy is going to be like um, medically oriented anatomy um, for uh, chiropractors, medical doctors, osteopaths, PTs, uh, PA, uh, OTs, um, massage therapist, anyone that works with the body is going to be doing more or less clinical anatomy, meaning they're going to use their anatomic knowledge of the body and apply it to uh, what's wrong and how to correct, make corrections or correctives. So think of clinical anatomy as that sort of um, general approach. And you have uh, classes or topics called regional anatomy. This is when I would take a section or region, we would do like the lumbar region of the spine, or we do an upper extremity or a uh, head and neck, um, abdominal uh, area, pelvis. We take a piece of the anatomy, a so-called region, and then we study it in depth. We study all the different aspects. It's vasculature, it's neurology, it's, it's uh, neuromuscular makeup, um, whatever structures are in that area. So that's a good approach. Uh, typically, we use this in the cadaver lab, the regional approach. Another approach to gross anatomy is uh, systemic anatomy. And this is the one you see in uh, your entry-level anatomy courses, your high school level um, refresher courses. And this one, they talk about those, those different organ systems, right? And you're probably most familiar with this, the different organ systems. 
And then there is uh, what I'll use a lot when I'm teaching is more of a, a functional anatomy. And this is where we're going to talk about uh, the different functions of living things is sort of how we divide that up. So clinical would be uh, typically you're going to do that just in an in a, in application process. Regional anatomy is a good way to do that in a, in a cadaver lab because you can focus entirely on the anatomic structures in the upper extremity, for instance, or uh, the area behind the knee or the uh, just the, the ankle. So you can go one area at a time. Systemic anatomy is typically how most people come to anatomy and learn it. You'll learn about your uh, cardiovascular system or your musculoskeletal system or the, the nervous system. Okay. So there's, those are some um, systems, right? Nervous system, cardiovascular, right, uh, etc. Right. So this would be sort of your systemic anatomy. So I'm going to erase that in a minute. Um, people are very familiar, uh, typically, with the different systems. We talk about this all the time. Your muscular system, your um, your renal system, your digestive system, uh, reproductive systems. One of, that's a great way to learn it in isolation, but when that carries past the, the, the bare introductions to anatomy or maybe uh, an intro level gross anatomy, it can get, um, it can anchor in your head and be kind of confusing later when you try to apply uh, anatomy clinically, right? Like your cardiovascular system, it, it's not an independent system. It, it cannot function without the respiratory system. It cannot function without... Um, the nervous system, especially the autonomic nervous system, doing regulation and getting some feedback. So uh, learning these systems in isolation is great for an entry level, uh, but then you should start to apply things either functionally or think of them functionally and apply them clinically. You need to understand that they're all um, interdependent. We're not a separate um, set of systems. Like when we saw the organizational hierarchy, you don't stop an organ system. They work together to form an organism. And it's a mistake to stop your anatomy um, outlook or, or forming an anatomic paradigm at that uh, organ system level. So, uh, as an aside, this happens a lot in, in um, mainstream medicine. You get through medical school and then people tend to subspecialize. I don't know how many subspecialties there are now, board certified 24, 26. Like you'd be a... A uh, cardiologist, or a nephrologist, or a pulmonologist, or a neurologist, and these are specialists in those particular systems, uh, which is fine. We need that. Uh, just don't lose sight of the fact that none of these systems are independent. Okay. So let's talk about this functional approach and how you can use the uh, systemic organization or learning uh, systemic anatomy as a learning tool, regional anatomy approach as a learning tool. And then you're going to apply this anatomy clinically. And I think this idea of functional divisions will help you out a little bit. <clears throat> That's the way I've, uh, I've uh, thought of it for several years. So let's think about what living things uh, do. Living things, living things move, right? All right, so what systems that you have that are primarily... Um, primarily concerned with movement of, of your organism, you moving around in your environment. Um, obviously, they're all, like I just said, they're all integrated, like the renal system provides uh, not directly with movement, indirectly will help support movement by getting rid of waste, but directly is going to be uh, the muscular system, right? Your system, is not really a system, but your collection of muscles, your uh, articular and skeletal, right? Articular and skeletal collection. So this is mainly your musculoskeletal or movement-based systems. Uh, living things need to um, coordinate and control that movement as they go around the environment. And your main system is concerned with coordination and control. Obviously, it would be your neuroendocrine system. We're going to say nervous system and endocrine. And these can be broken down uh, much further than I really that separate, honestly, but we'll come back to that later. So you're moving around, you got coordination and control of the organism as it moves through so it can respond to um, different threats or take advantage of different opportunities that present themselves for intake of nutrients or mating. So you're going to have to have a way to sort of protect yourself. And move 
move fluids around because you're a highly complex uh, organism. So you've got to have a way to communicate. Uh, we're going to say circulate because we're going to talk mainly about fluids. But you're going to have to have some systems that are main, that are um, primarily concerned with protection of the organism and then circulating and communicating uh, fluids inside the organism. So these systems will be uh, your integument or your skin. That's the main one. We'll talk about that. That's really interesting stuff. Maybe we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, your integumentary system, your uh, cardiovascular, which is actually two systems in one, right? The heart is its own complex uh, sort of organism. What the hell is that? And uh, the vasculature, the different arteries and arterioles and capillary beds and venules and veins and lymphatics, uh, moving that interstitial fluid and separating those different fluid compartments. So cardiovascular system. Then you've got the uh, immune system. I'll put that in quotes. All right, immune system. This is going to be your white blood cells. And it, this would almost be um, the blood itself as a system. The lymphatics, uh, which I would include with vasculature, but I'm going to write them down here so you don't think I left anything off for you. All right, so these are going to circulate and, and take control of your fluids because you're 60 to 65% uh, water. You're a very um, wet organism. And as you're moving around the environment, coordinating and controlling that movement, you need to protect yourself and circulate uh, fluids around your internal environment. You're going to need um, energy to do all this. So your energy management systems, you're going to need to take in nutrients from the environment. You're going to need to uh, process these, uh, metabolize these nutrients, and then dispose of waste. Three main systems here. Obviously, it's going to be your digestive system. Um, we're going to talk about that in a little other video because that's really shortchanging what happens in your uh, digestive system by calling it just digestion. There's absorption, there's um, secretion. We'll go through all that. Your digestive system, we're going to talk about the urinary uh, or renal uh, ability to get rid of um, water soluble waste. Digestive system's got the colon at the, the distal end that'll take care of solid waste. Your liquid waste will be handled by a urinary system, um, the renal system. That does a lot more than just that. It's going to help with your, your pH, and there's a lot of hormonal aspects of that. But basically, it's helping you maintain uh, energy. And then your uh, pulmonary, or uh, sometimes called respiratory system, that'll help you dispose of gaseous waste. But it's also going to bring in oxygen and uh, help with the metabolism of the nutrients you take in from the environment. So you're going to move around your environment as an organism. These systems kind of contribute directly to that. These systems are going to help you coordinate and control that movement. You're going to need to protect yourself and circulate around, for instance, uh, nutrients that you take in, circulate waste, maintain uh, fluid uh, compartments. You're going to have to manage that energy, uh, taking in nutrients, processing, metabolizing, getting rid of waste. And these three systems are mainly uh, concerned with that aspect of uh, living. And then what's the point of all this moving around uh, is making copies of yourself, uh, reproductive systems. So we have, uh, the, we have the male reproductive system and the female reproductive system. So we've got uh, just at a glance, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I break this up into a couple more. I say there's about 15 that's how I do it. 15 different systems, and they're going to be grouped into these five main areas. And I refer to this as a functional uh, anatomic approach. Right? And again, this there's no difference here between studying each of these systems individually, um, like you do with entry-level anatomy. You got to learn all about the different parts of the digestive system. What does the pancreas contribute? Uh, why is the stomach shaped that way? What the hell is a duodenum? That kind of thing, right? So you got to learn about these in isolation, and then you want to move on to sort of a, taking a functional approach and start thinking about them in terms of nested systems, and that'll help you get a better grasp on your clinical anatomy. Uh, when somebody comes in and says, oh, such and such is not working right, or you've discovered some sort of pathology or lesion or loss of function uh, or typically pain, which is kind of a, it's a lot of psychology to what pain is, but pain management, when people come in with these things and then what we can do about it. So start thinking about your anatomy in more 
advanced, um, uh, like an advanced paradigm or an outlook on how these parts all fit together. And then we will talk about that more in uh, class, uh, if you're in a class of mine. Or otherwise, you can just watch some of the other videos and see how I've broken the rest of the, the body apart. I'll always, not always, but I'll usually refer back to a functional anatomy uh, paradigm because it's easier to think about, I guess. But let me know what you think. Uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, check out the playlist for other um other videos might be of interest, and then uh, share this and help us support the charity by getting awareness out there of the uncivilized vitality. Um, that's it.